What's going on CDL fans, Maverick here, and today I'm bringing you my early predictions for the rosters going into Modern Warfare 2. This video is being recorded on August 17th, so we already know what players have had their contracts extended. We don't know any official rosters yet. We have some rumors. So this is kind of my predictions going into, you know, the, the, the bulk of roster mania. I have an awesome presentation made for you, so let's switch the camera right on over to this presentation. So let's kick off our CDL roster predictions, starting off with the Atlanta phase obviously this team is going to stay the same they've been the best team in the game for basically the last two years one of the top two teams in the game for the last three years and have been super consistent i don't expect to see them make any changes um it wouldn't really make any sense i think their roster is just about perfect they just unfortunately couldn't find any success this past season then we have the boston breach i have a feeling this team will stay relatively similar big difference is bringing in cami to play that flex role instead of tj halley who we know is a free agent nero and vivid as the aggressive smg duo they extended methods with the game launch extension meaning they have two weeks after the launch of modern warfare 2 to decide if they want to keep him i have a feeling they will he was really really good last year and he was a staple to this team and i think they want to keep him to pair him alongside a really good flex like cami who is now a restricted free agent from the toronto ultra moving on into the florida mutineers this is a team that i think is interesting not sure how realistic it is it was kind of made up of a mix of players i couldn't fit into other teams but we have capital and mac as your smg duo mac was pretty solid um in modern warfare 2019 and can run the ar and the smg role then you have paul lex and crim six as your ar slash flex duo uh these two seem to be getting along really well if you've seen any of the recent uh you know drama with nysl that happened on the flank these two seem to have a solid relationship share a lot of the same issues that they saw on nysl and i can see them wanting to be a package deal heading into modern warfare i think overall this team could be solid i don't know how great it would be It'd be interesting to see if capital does get a shot again in the league after being put on the bench from the boston breach last year i thought he was a pretty solid rookie this past season so i could see him getting a shot but overall i'm not 100 sure this team is realistic next up we have the london royal ravens now this is the team i could really see how happening you keep gizmo and zero as your ar and flex combo and then you bring in bance a fellow eu player from the toronto ultra who is now a free agent bance and zero have a history of playing and winning events together so i could see this making sense and then you bring in wardy as that other smg player to pair alongside bench from the amateur scene in the eu of challengers he's been a top player in eu challengers for a long time now and i could see him getting his shot on this team then we move into the la gorillas this team looking relatively similar they kept everyone on their roster except for gunless so far based on the contract extensions i could see them trying to upgrade you know if there's an available upgrade i would see them taking that option and we know the lag is a pretty uh wealthy organization so i could see them throwing the bag at some players and i could see attach wanting to come over here and team up with some of these veterans and make a strong veteran roster you bring in attach to replace spart on this team i think gives you a much stronger flex player and i could see them having a pretty strong roster based on how they performed at major two trying to improve on that heading into modern warfare 2 for the la thieves not much to say of course they went back to back majors major four and champs so they're going to be staying the same heading into modern warfare 2 then for the new las vegas legion no longer the paris legion this is the las vegas legion We'll see if they really spend money on any players or if they just try to keep people on minimums. I'm hoping they'll try to spend some money being as they're, you know, they're kind of changing to Vegas. They want to be a different, you know, maybe they want to turn a different leaf, you know, and, and be something different than they were in Paris. So I can see them bringing in the likes of maybe Havoc and Pentagram, who was a top amateur over the past few years. That was a bench player for the LA Thieves this past season. I can see them coming in as the SMG duo. We already know that they kept Temp. They extended his contract. So you keep him kind of as your flex player and then you bring in clayster for you know that that main ar role i can see clay getting another shot in the league just because of how you know legendary he is in the call of duty scene and i could see them kind of sliding in on this team pretty well for minnesota this is another team similar to the florida team that i'm not 100 sure exactly how you know this would work or if this would even happen but i can see them bringing back standy who is an unrestricted free agent we know how much the organization and the fans love standy in minnesota then you bring in awakening as your second smg because he can run smg or ar pretty well so he has the ability to flex if needed then you have gunless come in as your full flex role to play in the ar second ar slot who's pretty pretty solid in that area and then you bring in lucky from challengers we know that the rocker similar to the ultra were pretty big in the challenger scene this year 
and I could see them bringing in Lucky as a main AR to kind of be, you know, a, a new rookie in the scene for this team. And moving into the subliners, we already kind of know two to three players on this roster. We know they extended, or it looks like they're extending, or trying to extend Hydra on a big deal, as well as Kismet, and we know they want to bring in Skies to pair alongside Hydra. I could see this roster being pretty solid, and for me, the big thing they were lacking is some sort of leadership, and I could see Major Maniac coming in to be that leader. You have Skies kind of be your flex player Player, and you have Major Maniac come in as your main AR and also be a leader that can keep these guys' heads on straight, help them, you know, complete comebacks, do well in search and destroy when needed. Um, I don't know if Major will really get on a team. This was the only team I could see where he really fit well because this is a team that really needs a leader. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Major sort of shift into maybe an SND coaching role for a team like Minnesota, who we know he's had a strong tenure over there if he can't get a spot in the league. But I could see him sliding into this team pretty well. You know, you have the likes of Hydra and Kid up front who had played a pretty good sub duo last year you got a big slaying ar flex player in skies and then you have major maniac to be that leader and also help them out in search and destroy optic texas not much to say about them they're likely going to stay the same technically illy and shotzi are free agents because their uh, dallas empire deals are up but i see them just getting extensions and this team sticking i mean they're fan favorites i'm sure they all love being on the optic organization you know being a part of you know optic slash envy now i know they're technically just totally optic but you know, I, they, they're, they've been loved by this organization for a long time and I definitely see them sticking. And for probably my favorite roster on the list, we have the Seattle Surge. Um, it would be interesting to see if they do make a change because of kind of how they performed at COD Champs. I can see them only making a change if there's a real big upgrade available, like Afro being on the market, being a free agent, being able to bring him in the pair along side Red as a sub duo. You kind of, this would be one of the best sub duos in the league, if not the best, easily rivaling, you know, Simp and Ibiza or Skump and, um, um, Shotzi, you know, Afro and Pred would be absolutely insane. Then you have Sib and Accuracy as the ARs like we saw this past year. I don't see them replacing Accuracy. He's been a, he's very important to his team and he kind of plays his role perfectly. He's not going to give you a 1.1 KD, but he'll give you, you know, a 0.9 to a 1 KD, but also be the leader, clutch up and search and destroy and keep these guys, you know, heads in the game when they need it. I think big, you know, more common scenario, this team doesn't change at all and you still see Mac on this roster. But if the opportunity presents itself and they can throw the bag at Afro, I'm sure he would be interested in pairing himself alongside, you know, Pred and Sib and kind of being a young core going forward into the future. I can see this team dominating the league in the future, you know, similar to what we saw with like Simp, Abizi, and Selium in recent years. I could see Pred, Afro, and Sib kind of being a new wave of that. And then lastly, we have the Toronto Ultra. This team is not confirmed, but likely very possible. You know, we saw that they're keeping Kleenex and Insight and they're shopping around Bance and Cami. And then we know they have Hixie and, um, um, scrappy on the amateur on their bench and their roster so i'm sure they want to bring those guys in who both looked good when they played on the pro level in a couple series in the cdl and were great amateur you know challengers players this entire year i'm sure got i'm definitely sure scrappy's gonna get a shot on this team not 100 sure about hixie but i could definitely see it happen now to talk about some notable free agents biggest name really on this list for me is priesta i didn't really know where to slot him in he kind of had a down year down couple of years where he wasn't great same thing with tj halley to see if either of those can get a shot as a flex on any of these teams you know there's other people that were rookies last year like jimbo gravity pro loot nasty too real um that i'm not sure are going to get teams i could see maybe nasty getting a team or maybe gravity it'll be interesting to see if they end up getting any shots on any of these teams but overall they weren't really outstanding players and i also can see them not having a lot of the personal connections around the league as they were rookies to kind of slot themselves in i can see the likes of nasty staying as a substitute player on the bench for the London Royal Ravens, or maybe even starting on that team and Wordy coming in as a substitute on the bench. You never really know kind of what's going to happen with bench players and who's going to be signed. I think we'll see bench players be a more um, prominent signing this year in roster mania and not necessarily as much of a secondary or an afterthought for these teams. I think we realized how important bench players are. But yeah, that does it for my early predictions for Roster Mania. Let me know what you think about this. Do you agree with any of this? Disagree with any of this? Kind of what are your predictions for maybe some of the key teams? Um, I would love to hear what you all are thinking. If you did enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe for more CDL content as well as content about Modern Warfare 2 as there's more leaks and rumors and reveals that are coming up in the coming weeks. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.